Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to World at War Comics. My next special guest is Mr. Jim Mint himself. Jim, what's going on, brother? Man, Tommy, everything's going good. Thank you for inviting me to the show. I know we had to push it back a few hours, so thanks for being flexible. But uh, I'm excited to talk to you and chat. I know you've had some big guests on the show before, so I know I have big shoes to fill. Hopefully, I do, do them justice. <laughs> nah, I think you're going to be all right, man. Uh, I've been watching your show for a long time. Obviously, you and Comic Tom. Excuse me, Comic Tom, and I know you had Drew over, who we both kind of know, and your setup for interviews, man, was just dope. And of course, that room with the statues and and the omnibus is just, yeah, you, you get a little a uh, little bit of jealousy when you look at that room, man. It looks so dope, so dope. And then you got your lineup of all your arcade games. I mean, you got a pretty dope setup, man. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not. Uh, it didn't happen overnight. This was a sure. continuous, you know, build of. Man caves going from just a wall to a room to where we're at now. It actually didn't end up working out for me, kind of, is what I've been uh, talking openly with people about recently. I built this yeah. big space thinking this was the next level of Gemmin Collectibles. You guys have been with me. You've seen it grow. Let's go bigger. Let's go crazier. It's going to be better, right? Wasn't better. It lost the, <laughs> my channel lost its soul. I, uh, uh, how you said, not that is jealousy, but it's like, oh, this guy is like bougie now, man. I didn't come here for this. I came here for the guy that I could drink beers with and just talk bullshit. So it, it, it was an expensive lesson to learn, but I think it was an important one. And um, seeing the love and support that I'm getting now, unexpectedly, yeah. uh, it feels so good. And I, I, I learned a lot. So moving forward, if I ever, uh, if I ever get popping again, I, I know what not to do, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I understand, I guess, that side of it. But I, I always felt you've always been the same guy, though. You know what I mean? Obviously, the the aesthetics behind you changed enormously, man. It was badass, I thought. But uh, I always felt like you've always been kind of true. That's why I enjoyed watching you and uh, uh, Tom together, because yeah. uh, you'll be really real. Like, if you like something, you like it. If you don't, you have no problem saying that. That's not for me. And I yeah, I tried to be like that. that. I think I did step into that too much of being a professional, you know, yeah. thinking that was like what I should be doing. But then again, like nobody signed up for professional Gem Mint. That's not why they signed up. So why yeah. am I doing that? You know, like why am I <laughs> thinking my videos need to be so highly produced? It, Yo, I popped off off my phone, off my <laughs> iPhone, on a tripod, on a box. And for some reason, I kept thinking, oh, you got to get more professional, better quality. But and nobody yeah. asked for that. I don't yeah, know why yeah. I, it was so important to me. So I'm, I'm really just trying to get back to the basics now to be as authentic as I can. But I do appreciate you still seeing that throughout those times. I mean, it still was me. I wasn't being fake. I think I was yeah. just trying a little too hard to be like professional. Yeah, yeah. I know uh, I watched an episode. I think it was the first episode where you announced that you and Comic Tom, you were kind of going to go your own way. And I thought you handled it so professionally. And I know you're still very close with him. Yeah. Um, but you kind of talked about that that salesman side of what that show meant. Obviously, you're looking at like what's going to be popping in the next week or two based off of all kinds of stuff, whether it's the Deadpool movie that's going to drive prices up. Like, do you miss a little bit of that? I know it's only been a week. Um, do you see yourself ever going back into that realm or you're like, that that's like I did it for what four years and I'm I'm yeah. good man I had checked that box. Well, and, and the show was more so looking at the sales from the prior week and trying to figure out what's causing that and trying to see and spot patterns and and you know not not so much to tell people what to buy. Many of the times it's to tell people what not to buy. Wait for this yeah. movie to end. <laughs> Don't spend fifteen hundred because the last GPA sales a thousand. But a lot of yeah. people get. Get it twisted like this is some type of hype book channel where we're telling you what you should be investing in, which I mean, maybe sometimes we gave those uh, recommendations, but oftentimes it's just, again, analyzing data. Um, I like the show. I was proud of the show. I don't think my audience really rocked with it, though. I don't think that's what they wanted to see me for. And I've always been a buyer and seller. Like my motto is make the hobby fund itself. I used to buy and sell key issues. I used to be a key issue collector. I'm not that anymore. So it kind of doesn't really make sense to uh, to talk about that. I'm not buying and selling. It's almost like I was coaching, not playing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I, I, I have been a player. I was just a retired player, I guess you could say. <laughs> but uh, I don't see myself talking comic book market because, you know, when I step back and think about it, I don't talk about it on my channel whatsoever. Yeah. It's not really my focal point. When Tom asked me to do it, it was because I did know my stuff. I mean, I wasn't the most knowledgeable, but I could hang 
We could talk right. whatever, but I'll be the first one to tell you if I don't know something. But um, I liked key issues. I was familiar with you know graded comics and and that kind of stuff. So it made sense to do it. I'm really proud of the show we did. I don't like that it gets the negative attention that it gets because again, I don't think it wasn't in, intended to make you go out and buy something and lose money. I think of anything, right. it's like if you had the book, you had an idea of where it was if you wanted to sell. If you were in the market, all, same thing. You had an idea of what it was yeah. worth, what it's going for. We're kind of giving you our thoughts. Wolverine 1, New Mutants 98. You probably yeah. at this point should wait till a few months after the movie's over. Like I thought we were giving good advice, but um, nothing against Tom. Great dude. Always looked out for me. He stood up for me behind closed doors in uh, professional aspects. He, he checks on me on the regular. He knows I'm going through a hard time, and he, he totally yeah. understands and supports what I'm doing. And, um, yeah, no bad blood. I wanted to make it so clear. Like, this is not, like, a falling out. This is just me yeah. moving on and trying to really find myself again, which I kind of feel like I lost along the way. I felt like that came across in your video, too, man. It didn't seem like there was any animosity or anything like that that was built between you two. So I, I think it came across, bro. I at least me, I, I didn't feel that way. I feel like uh, the bigger a channel gets, the more uh, obviously you get a lot more eyes on it. Right. That's just like the nature of having yeah. a big channel is the haters start coming out of everywhere, man. And even you, not that they're haters, but even like the last few episodes you've been talking about these guys that have been using your name, right, to to get more views. And yeah, uh, I don't know, man. I just think that's the nature of it. It's kind of sad, but I'm not sure if there's a fix to it. No, I think it's human nature. I don't like to look at them as haters. I mean, I'm sure there are yeah. just haters out there, but for the most part, man, sometimes these criticisms, they hit hard because they're true. You get yeah. mad because you know there's truth <laughs> exactly. to it. So it's hard to like look past the fact they're talking about you and take a step back like, damn, man, this dude is kind of right. So I, ha luckily, I was able to do that recently and just really take a look at myself and, and, and try to take some of these criticisms and, and make some changes because – Man, my channel was dead. I mean, not that it's popping now. I mean, we, we're doing okay now, but yeah. I let it die. And I, and I think I was going through like this kind of depression where um I was trying just accepting it. I was just gonna let it die. Fuck it, man. I'll go work yeah. wherever at a regular job. Yeah. There's no big. I don't have to do this. I still have a yeah. beautiful family and everything. But yeah, um, you know, I I made that video just to get it off my chest. And like, man, the people really, a lot of people came back. I, I was really so happy to see that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to just try to keep it authentic, keep it real and make the type of content that people want to see. Yeah. Good for you, man. I, the reality is, I think a lot of people are going through a similar situation that don't even have YouTube pages. Right. Bro, I mean, the, the economy is pretty tough right now. Like it's very relatable. Right. So you don't have to have this big channel that all of a sudden it's not popping the way it does. And now you got to downsize, man. I think a lot of us have been downsizing. Like I don't buy as many toys as I used to, and I still have work. Right. So I, I just think it's a weird time right now economically. And I think you got to be careful. And I've been there, bro. I've lost, I've gone bankrupt. I've lost my house. Like, so it, it feels that's the authenticity that I was telling you about, man. That's what I really enjoy about you, man. It, it you, you kind of speak from the heart. And uh, when you do, and people have gone through something similar, even though they don't have a YouTube channel, they can relate, man. And I think that's super important, man. Bro, in the comments, so many people with a similar story. It's your point. Channel doesn't even matter. Just no. getting big raises at your job, moving up in tax brackets, moving up and getting a bigger house, bigger car. And then all of a sudden, you I mean, you think it's going to last forever. And yeah. it's so easy to, to judge because, you know, even me looking back, it's like, how could you have been so careless? But at the time... You don't think it's ever going to end. You think everything's going to stay exactly the same or get better. But it was comforting to see it. And it's kind of sad to say, but how many yeah. people are going through it because like, oh, okay, bam, I'm not alone with this. Yeah. Some people are just having a hard time you know, on the regular basis because of inflation and what have you. And then people yeah. like you met, like yourself, who have gone through similar things in the past and have got gotten past it. So, yeah, yeah I can see. I, I'm, I'm glad I made the video, man. I was going to wait on it. Uh, because obviously if I did move and everything changed, I'd have to say something. <laughs> yeah. You're like, but, where, uh, where, where, where's all your omnibus? Yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> it was a video that I've been planning for like, at least since January 1st of this year. But, uh, I just, I, you know, now the house not really selling, just being on the market almost 40 days. I'm like, you know what, let's just get this off my chest now. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm not like a religious dude, kind of, kind of spiritual. Yeah. I'm like, man, yeah. this was supposed to happen. This feels like 
Mm-hmm. You know, I might I might have wanted something, but this happened instead. And, and it's like, wow, this kind of makes sense now that this happened, you know, and to connect with so many people going through a, similar things. It's like, damn, yeah. I kind of get it a little bit, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, su- super relatable, man. All right, man. I don't, I don't want to dwell too much on, on that. I know you're going through a lot on that. And I think it's super relatable. Um, but, man, I, I would love to understand like the floppy to omnibus, like when did that happen in your life? Cause your omnibus collection is just chef's kiss, bro. Thank it's, you. it's so freaking amazing. Um, and, and to be honest, uh, I think the older I get, the less floppies I'm trying to go after. And then I just want to read these old stories that are just out of my range from a price range. Right. And yep. omnibus man for a hundred bucks, you're getting all these amazing stories and it's a lot cheaper. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you're getting like a modern Omni that covers a moder- modern event, like let's say Axe Judgment Day, it yeah. kind of evens out to about the same price. But if yeah. you're going Uncanny X-Men Volume 1, you're killing it. If you're going Golden Age Batman Omnibus Volume 1, you would never be able to put that together. Yeah. Um, what got me into it is at the time, I was back into reading comics. So I was going to my LCS. I had a big bookshelf full of short boxes, plain white short boxes, and I was collecting Spider-Man keys. I was collecting every first appearance Spider-Man villain I can get, black suit keys, this, that, and the third. And then I ended up um, selling them all to buy an Amazing Fantasy 15. I've always been the kind of guy, you know, build something up, sell it off to get that one thing that you would have never been able to get just by itself. And I remember walking into my comic shop. It was uh, Past, Present, Future in West Palm Beach, Florida, and seeing Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1, the Omnibus. And I picked this thing up. And I'm flipping through it. I'm like, hold on. It's got AF15, issues 1 through 33, I think the first two annuals or something. And I'm like, all these keys I've been collecting the whole time, you can read everything right here. And if you have these on the shelves, it'll be so much more attractive than just these boring all-white short boxes. So I was pretty much hooked right away. I actually uh, was building up some blue chip keys. Like I had AF15. I had X-Men 1, Fantastic wow. Four 1, Hulk 181s. Um, A bunch of keys. And again, this is how I ended up with Tom. Like I was in the key issue game. I ended up selling them all. I started buying Omnibus like crazy. And somewhere in that mix, I also started to get into statues, which I'm sure you'll probably want to talk about. But the (laughs) Omnibus thing, first of all, the fact that you could have ASM one through, they haven't really got to 700 yet, but they do kind of also do like volumes one through whatever. But then they'll have Spider-Man by McFarlane, Spider-Man by Eric Larson, now Mark Bagley, David Michelini. They'll have creator-centric runs. I got a huge Spider-Man omnibus collection. That's my favorite character. It always has been. And um, then I saw the Infinity Gauntlet omnibus. I'm like, hold on. So now it's you get the main story, but all the tie-ins that as a kid, I, I wouldn't yeah. even know which, which yeah. comics to get. It wasn't the same as it is now with online and everything. So to have Thanos Quest 1 and 2, to have all the Silver, Silver Surfer Ron Lim tie-ins, the main story, the aftermath, I was sold, man. I was sold on the omnibus. I went crazy. I'm, I'm a little bit of an eccentric guy, if that doesn't make sense yet. Yeah. And I had, for a long time, every single omnibus ever released. Uh, at, at, you know, I was up to date for a long time until we might get to it later, but I ended up realizing I don't really need every single one. I'm probably not going to read a lot of this stuff, but... Yeah. That's how I got into the Omnis. Immediately, I lost I- interest in key issues. I was already losing interest because I had AF-15. I had X-Men 1. I finally got FF1. And then I'm like, now I need Jim 83. Now I need Hulk yeah. 1. It's like it never ends. Never ends, yeah. Chasing the dragon never ends. So it was already feeling a little daunting. I mean, at the time, these were like two, three grand each. I still just a regular dude working a regular job. You know, high school dropouts, two kids at a young age uh don't didn't come from money so i always had to hustle for everything and um the omnibus uh was the final straw in that key those key collect uh key issue collecting days yeah i mean it's it's such an awesome awesome setup that you have man um so let's Thank get you. into the statues bro because not only the omnibus you got a quite a collection of freaking amazing statues um i i saw your I think when you first kind of had all your setup done, you did a tour of that uh, that basement area, man, mm-hmm. and and seeing the omnibuses, and then going over to the other side and seeing like their own spot for these four foot statues were just <laughs> absolutely incredible, man. 
Um, how did you get into statues? Because that's not a cheap. Uh, <laughs> that's not. A I'll cheap tell you. Yeah, that's paper. where that starts. And, and by the way, the basin, man. Even though it didn't work out. It was fun and super cool to like have a vision and see it come to life, even though, like I said, it didn't work out, but um, it was still a cool thing to do, man. I'll, I'll always be able to look yeah. back at that. And I have the library with the ladder, like all the things, yeah. you know, again, I don't need any of that. I, the channel never needed any of that, but it, it was, it was fun to do, you know, when we did it. But uh, I remember going to past, present, future, and they would sell sideshow statues. I remember when they had the Galactus maquette from sideshow at retail when it was out and I was like $800. Yeah. Who would spend eight hundred dollars on this? Meanwhile, I'm spending thousands of dollars on keys. I don't know why that didn't really correlate. <laughs> but what it was as a key issue collector, um, I saw the sideshow uh, Wolverine versus Hulk maquette recreating the cover, and I was like, yeah. "Yo!" Actually, it was my boy Eric who was big in Facebook. He's the guy that has like a hundred Hulk one eighty ones. I always oh, called wow. him E Rich because he spells <laughs> Eric like a weirdo. But uh. <laughs> He had a picture with them together, and I'm like, dude, I think I need to get this statue. I remember I was so nervous to enter my information onto Sideshow site to pre-order it. Uh, I don't know why. It was like 600 or 650 It felt like $6 million. I've spent yeah. way more on comics, but for some reason, this, to buy it in a statue felt irresponsible. I don't know how else to say it. I pre-ordered it. As soon as I hit pre-order... I was so happy. You, you've heard of buyer's remorse, but are oh, you yeah. familiar with like, buy, what's the opposite of that? <laughs> I don't know, man. Buyer's rejoice, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I had buyer's rejoice. So much so that before it shipped, because it was like shipping, but it was still in a pre-order phase. Yeah. Um, so I, like, I, I pre-ordered it, and I think it was like in February of 2017, and it ended up shipping pretty quickly. However, I was so hyped and amped up waiting for this piece that I went to past, present, future, I bought the Apocalypse Premium format right off the shelf. And what I thought was the Spider-Man comic Ket, which is a quarter scale um, Spider-Man. I ended up getting the Spider-Man J. Scott Campbell, which is a one fifth uh, scale. So boom, one of my first purchases, I already made a mistake, but I was so <laughs> hyped. And uh, I got home, I unboxed them. I loved them. Wolverine uh, versus Hulk came in. I loved it. The statue smell, the unboxing experience. <laughs> Uh, I immediately ordered the brown suit Wolverine, the saber tooth that went with it. <laughs> I was hooked. Like most statue collectors, I think we buy the most statues in that first year than we yeah. do in total for the remaining years. <laughs> uh, and, you know, thinking back, like they don't smell the same anymore, man. Like that high is not the same as it was when you first get into it. But, you know, I still have fond memories of those. Uh, but that's how I got into it. And I was done with key issues at this point, bro. It's omnibus yeah. and statues for me. I started looking up statues and what was out on youtube i found cartel from hell which was a dude that was like me yeah he's probably cooler than me though cool as <laughs> california dude great setup great production value he reviewed them uh i watched all his videos and then i found uh omnibus channels omni bros which they didn't have a channel yet they all had their individual channels and they would all kind of form like voltron to talk omni so i would watch them <laughs> And I'm watching them, and I'm like, I could do this, but I want to do everything. I don't want to just hone in on one thing because all of these channels just did one thing. I'm like, I'm going to do a channel and do all this. Uh, and I'm watching their stuff as I'm, I have this long-ass commute to work. I had like a three-hour commute at this time Damn. because I took this job promotion, right? And I remember getting to like, you know, catching up on their backlog, and I'm like, dude, where, where's the video? Where's the next video? And I'm like, if I ever start a channel, I'm dropping a video every single day. As a fan, that's what I wanted. And that's that's yeah. my I did that for years, man, to try to make sure there was at least something every day. Yeah, that's incredible, man. So do statues fluctuate in value just like floppies do? Or is it pretty steady increases over time? Like, what does that look like from a uh, like an investment standpoint so it definitely has ebbs and flows like the comic book market right now okay. we're in a down market i think every collectible hobby is how yeah. it used to work in like the COVID era was a company releases a statue it has a set edition size if it's a hot piece and it sells out from the manufacturer and the only place you can get it are through other collectors via ebay or whatever it tends to appreciate or it used to tend to appreciate in value yeah. Now, sometimes you have one that's maybe a dud. Bottom line, if it's available through Sideshow or whoever, whatever company, the one you have is going to be worth less off top because why would I buy your used piece when I could just buy a brand new? So really, it just depends on whether it sells out or not. 
there was a time during this era where these edition size, sizes got really high. Therefore, they didn't sell out. Therefore, they didn't appreciate. And a lot of us are impulsive buyers. So when we go to cash out and we're, we're losing money, it's a big turnoff for the hobby. So the statue hobby had a real peak and decline from that COVID era, I would say. And the statue hobby, I, it feels kind of like where I feel with my channel right now. There's a lot of light at the end of the tunnel with taking a step back. There haven't been a ton of new releases this whole year, but new ambitious stuff is being released that has a lower edition size, better, you know, price is still high. They're still higher than they were. But for Sideshow, for an example, at least they're under a thousand bucks. These other companies have gotten so expensive. Uh, it really priced out a lot of like the regular you and I's, you know? Mm hmm. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I wondered, man, is like, how big is that collector population when the entry into that kind of collecting is $1,500 or $2,000, right? And then how yeah. many are they producing of those statues to ensure that that investment at least stays what you paid for it? And that's why I always got nervous about statues, man. I'm, I'm a, like a McFarlane, Marvel Legends, like yeah. <laughs> I spend 20 bucks and I'm like, okay, that's not too bad. Right. But then I have to have every single one. So it does add up over time. And then my wife's like looking at me going, dude, you need to chill, bro. You don't need every single thing. I'm like, but it's different. It's Wolverine in this outfit. Just, very similar, right? Yeah. Very similar, just on a much lower scale. Um, but still it gets out of hand too, because I also am impulsive. And as soon as I see something come out, I know it's going to sell out right away. And then I'm going to have to rebuy it on eBay for another 30 bucks. So right. I end up Bomo. just, I'm on the pre, yeah, exactly. I'm on that pre-order all the time. Exactly. And uh, now I'm running out of space, man, and I don't I have see. room for more figures. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's just a weird, stupid situation. And it's a it's a crazy, uh, I don't know, man, it's addicting. It's a very addicting. And, and then sometimes, man, maybe you need to crash a little bit to realize you don't need everything, man. Let's be a little bit more choosy. Let's yeah. make sure that you're getting things that you really enjoy. You just don't have to have yep. every version of the same thing. That's you kind of what starting, I've been learning. Yeah, you end up starting to just buy shit because it's cool with really no attachment to the character. And that's when you kind of start exactly. flying off the handle a little bit. I've always ended up selling pieces that I didn't love, but pieces that like a Spider-Man or a Venom or a Wolverine, I would have a harder time getting with, uh, parting with. Although I've always been the type of collector that never really got too attached to, to stuff. Like I love to collect. But I'm yeah. also the type that if I'm bored, stuff is making the, the chopping block real quick. Like it doesn't really hurt me to to sell things because I know there's always something new. And I've always, you know, appreciated the time I've had with something. There are some people that never sell. Uh, but there are there are people like myself that are always like <laughs> wheeling and dealing and buying and selling or buying a piece. They sell it before they open it. You know, I'm not that bad, but yeah. Um, I, I do um, I do let something go if I'm ready to move on from it pretty pretty easy. Yeah. So, I mean, let's talk a little bit more about the future of Gem Mint, man. I'm really enjoying kind of the morning show that you have with your wife, which is a lot of fun, man. Um, gaming, obviously, is a big part. I'm not much of a gamer, so I, I couldn't even come close to keeping up to you when you talk about gaming, bro. But uh, yeah. obviously, that's a big part of your life, and it seems like you and your wife have that in common where there's some – enjoyment of getting on a, a ps5 or whatever you're using man to to kind of get lost is that a bigger part of your channel you think moving forward or so the the live morning show monday through friday is something that i've really been thinking about this whole time where i've had this dilemma i'm feeling down the channel's not doing good i'm losing inspiration i'm not making content and i'm like dude you don't work you could literally just go live every single day just do that so you know i had had this idea and then it was something I was going to do. You know, I made this announcement of what's going on and I'm this and that. So I, I, I did it. I just said, screw it. We're going to do it this week. I was going to do it August, starting in August. I'm like, no, screw that. Just do it now. And uh, really happy to see how it's been received. It feels like something that a lot of people needed. Like there's a there's a, a need for that morning show that talks about the type of stuff we're into. There's not really much going on right now. A lot of channels that came up during the pandemic era are not active. So like the content feels slow, the content and the channels that are still around, all of us seem to be, our, all of our views seem to be down significantly from that era. So I, I wanted to try it. I was nervous. I was like, man, this might be a dud. There might not be anybody watching this in the morning. But um, luckily there, there's a, it's a good time slot, it seems like. So I, I want to continue that. 
I'm going to continue to do the unboxing videos as they come in. Like I have a sideshow Hulk that's actually should be here on Monday. I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it more like how I used to do it back in the day. I'm not going to try to be so professional with it and just trying to be more authentic how I was. You know, I think we lost that somewhere along the way. Um, if somebody makes a video talking shit about me, I might respond. If you have a hundred views or a thousand, whatever, I might you get ready because I might come for you. You know, if you come for me, <laughs> I might come back for you. I've always tried to play the high road. Oh, you're a bigger channel. Don't pick on this guy. Yeah. You know, fuck that. You come for me. Get ready <laughs> for everything that might come with it. Not a threat. Just I might do it. So just keep yeah. that in mind. Now there might be some people that bait just to do it, and if it looks stupid or if I feel it's not authentic, I probably will ignore it. But if yeah, it's somebody yeah. that's for real. I might come at you and I might agree with you. It's never going to be a place of anger. I'm such in a Zen like state right now being just so open and honest. I don't feel like yeah. I even care at this point. And if you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, I'm gonna correct you. So look forward to that. I'm sure there's going to be some more challengers <laughs> and, I, and I'm down for that. Um, yeah. We'll see if I have to pick up a side gig. I would love to get a gig within our hobby in some way, shape or form. I, I, yeah. I mentioned to you, I had a meeting earlier and it's within the industry, um, but Anything I decide to do, it's going, it's being ran through the live stream first. Guys, do you think I should do this? Is this a bad yeah. look? Help me out because obviously I can make bad mistakes sometimes. <laughs> so uh, what do you guys think about this, that, and the third? And yeah. it came up during this conversation too. So they were totally cool with that. Yeah. Um, if not, man, I, I would work my old job, customer service, you know, helping people out, talking with people. I have the gift of gab. So um, I would not be opposed to that either. But uh yeah, so we have all that going on. Uh, I'm excited about the future. I, I, gaming is a big part of my life, like you mentioned. I was a gamer yeah. first. It's yeah. funny. You guys know me as this comic guy, this collector guy. I've been playing video games since Mario and Duck Hunt. I'll, yeah. I will <laughs> whoop your ass in Street Mortal Kombat 1 through 3 all day. Uh, I'm a platinum, ho uh, a platinum trophy hunter. I'm on my 83rd platinum. I've had a lot of lulls since I've started doing that back in like 2012 or something. But I would love to start streaming gaming. Uh, editing all that footage into like a whole i got the platinum trophy for berserk video um, i got some dude helping me out right now uh just off the strength and i would love to build that up and pay this guy and uh i, I really want to do that because like benny comic story and told me i shared this in a video recently my channel is not really about comics it's not really about statues it's really about me and the shit that i like to collect and, and the shit that i think is cool Mm -hmm. I like to game and I like to get these trophies. So I would love to share that. And I think it would me make for funny uh, content because, again, I don't just game. I'll be in the chair like this. <laughs> I'll be, you know, because you know, it's a, you'll be doing it for some hours. Or I'll get legitimately excited when I finally get a trophy or finally pop a platinum. And to do that on stream, I think would be crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's no, kind 100%. Of, uh, that, that's a, you know, I'm not really ready right now. I, I kind of have to change some things in this room but uh, i would like to work on that this weekend actually if i could so that is that is part of the plan for the future nice nice now i know um comic tom came out with his own comic book through massive um which uh crashed down yep. have you ever thought of going into that route like has there ever been a desire like do you have stories that you've been sitting on and like man if i ever had a chance man i would love to do a comic book no nah, that has I mean, never I, been your thing i'm i'm creative but not like in that type of way like I'm yeah. creative, like I come up with ideas, I can make videos, I can make, you know, content, but um, I'm not really good at like those ideas and such. And I'm glad I didn't really pursue that route. I tried to write one with my boy, but um, that's not for me. And I, and, you know, I'm glad I didn't. I don't really want to sell items really to people. I could see myself doing merch, doing t-shirts because I'm yeah. a t-shirt guy, but I don't really want to create a product just to sell to y'all. Like I, I, you know, I realized that I just want to make the content. People are supporting through Super Chats. Like, really, people, if they want to support you, they're going to support you. There's no need to try to force something down their throat that they wouldn't have bought otherwise. So uh, all power to Tom. I mean, Crashdown is a good read. I don't know if you read it. I mean, yeah. I'm probably no, I biased because it's my boy. It's not a whack book. It's kind of no, like Aliens-inspired uh, mm -hmm. sci-fi. And, um, you know, I, I hope his audience enjoys it. The variants, I'm, a, I'm an homage sucker. So I, I get why, you know, he does them and people like them. Uh, but for me personally, I, first of all, I just, again, I just don't think I'm creative enough to even come up with it to, to, if I wanted to. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, man. I bet you are. But uh, you got to go where your passion's at, though, right? That's what I'm saying. I, I, there's no passion in there for me. I've had offers yeah. like, you know, publishers have said, hey, you want to write something, come up with something, co-write it. We could have an editor help you out. I'm like, 
really, if I, if I loved it, I would have jumped on it. But something in me yeah. was just like, eh, I don't really want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Now, what do you think about the the comic industry as a whole? Floppy, omnibus, man. Like you, like I'm I'm watching a bunch of different channels, and I, I love. I probably spend more time on YouTube just watching other channels than I do anything else, man. Unless there's a UFC. UFC is kind of my thing. So mm. right now they, they're in Abu Dhabi and there's a fight going on right now. Cool. Um, but that's that's kind of my thing outside of comics. But, you know, the, there's a lot of nervousness around the comic industry as a whole. You're seeing declines in Marvel and DC. Um, they even stopped kind of sharing numbers about a year and a half ago. So you have about a hundred stores that are using, I can't remember the name of the system and we're getting information through those hundred stores that gives us kind of an idea from mm. a data standpoint, how comics are doing, but we're seeing um, a lot of struggle. And I don't know if it's just bad storytelling, if it's uh, maybe it's like the collector's market, right? You look at dynamite who I love. I, I'm a big fan of dynamite comics, but they'll have a comic book with 20 covers for one yeah. issue. And you're like, dude, I mean, how much is too much, bro? Like right? and, and so, me, like I get I get uh comps from some companies, and I'll get a comp, and it's like there's eight of the same issue. Like I'm like, dude, yeah. this is too much, man. But I think it's they're doing much. that because they're not selling to a hundred thousand people anymore. They're selling to ten thousand, yeah. so they're selling hopefully ten versions to those ten thousand yeah. people to make up the difference. Yeah, um, I could appreciate that it helps pay artists. You know, 100%. and I think that if yeah. it wasn't for Honestly, if it wasn't for CGC and the fact that these single issues can get signed and graded yeah. and potentially go up in value, the single issue market, I think, would really be in trouble. So a lot of people don't like CGC, and I get that, or any yeah. grading company. But think about if it wasn't for them. I don't know where we would be at with the single issues right now. Yeah, no, that's a really good point, man. I, I have a few items that I do um, through CGC or CDCS, but, man, I just, you know, you're buying a key issue – um and then you're sending it off and you're getting it like a year later graded and then it's never yeah. the grade that you were expecting to get and i don't know just emotionally i'm like dude why am i grading anything man it just yeah this is for me like i'm not a seller i just collect what i like i'm a big green lantern fan so i have most of the keys in green lantern except for obviously the those first issues are out of my price range when you get <laughs> but yeah. uh one day i'd love to have them man because that is my thing I always wanted to showcase 22. I always thought it was a dope yes. cover, oh, dope first appearance. Cover. But to your point, I don't think you really need to grade anything unless you plan to sell it. Because it's like, instead yeah. of you telling your customer, hey, this is VF, trust me, two grand. Yeah. It's at least a, a non-biased party. I mean, for the most part, right? Depending on what's yeah. going on. But <laughs> it's, a, it's a third party saying, now this is what it is. And we've been doing this for 23 yeah. years. And you know, this, these are comps to that sale. Um, but yeah, or if you just have a super high grade book, you you want to preserve yeah. it. I mean, I know there's other ways, but I really just like the encapsulation process. I like the notes on there that this is, this is yeah. why this is significant. So, uh, I, I stopped submitting a long time ago too, because I'm so impatient. And again, yeah, you send yeah. all these books, not one comes back 9.8. You're like, fuck man, all that waiting just to be disappointed. <laughs> Dude, I, I so I, I do have my own comic series and I sent some off to CGC and when you when you like use comic wellspring or kablam when they send you your comic book you have that white paper that goes over it mm -hmm. um for to protect each comic so you don't get any kind of like scratches in shipment okay literally i took that comic book put it in a a, a box and sent it off and i'm getting like nine fours and nine sixes i'm like <laughs> how does that even make sense it's not Untouched. even been touched by human hands right, right. And so that's Unless how i was like dude, somehow cool. when it got shipped to you who the hell knows right? maybe but, but i mean i looked at it, i'm like dude this is like perfect so anyways i just yeah. there is so much subjectivity and yeah you could send like i what i would love to try is to send one get a nine four crack it open and then resend it and see what i get just it's been done it's, it's been done to various results if i could recall on channels yeah back in the day but yeah at the end of the day you're sending it to a, another dude who's just a human being you know like yep. did they have a bad day that day did their wife make them sleep on the couch the night before everyone's getting <laughs> fucked up grades that next day like, exactly you know it's, all it eights, kind of, man it's an eight day for you <laughs> it's kind of a crapshoot i guess right yeah 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 no, but I do so think true, maybe man. for older books, you know, the problem is everybody started sending 50 submission modern books. Like, bro, yeah. we're grading, you know, $4 books to make them $50 books. But it's like, to me, it's like you want that AF-15 slabbed up. You want that X-Men 1 100%. slabbed up. You don't want it to get any more damage. 
you want to really have a fair yeah. grade, but like the modern 9.8 game, it's so stupid. The 9.6 and the 9.8 yeah. difference, like for what, man? It's yeah. like it's the same yeah. shit. <laughs> same shit, man. Yeah. yeah, I think the most expensive comic I have right now that I graded was Invincible One. Oh, um, there you go. That makes sense too. Even yeah. though that will be considered modern, yeah. that's a, a banger key though. Yeah, it's probably going for three or four grand, I would think. Yeah, uh, like a nine count. six, nine eight. What was the print count on that? I know Tom always mentions it when we would do the videos. Yeah. Thirty thousand printed or something. Remember. I might be thinking of something else. Yeah, because remember he, uh, Robert Kirkman wrote that, and he lied. Uh, oh no, no, that was uh, what you call it? His other title, Void Rivals. He wrote it. Uh, no, um, the the zombie one. Well, Walking Dead. Walking Dead. So when he did Walking Dead, remember he lied to Image, saying that there was going to be aliens. Um, and, uh, that's how he got that title to go. And they're like, he got to like issue six and they're like, where's the aliens? He goes, Oh, there's no aliens in the comic. But by the time he got to like issue six, it was already starting to pop. Yeah. And so they let it kind of go. <laughs> why, why did they out. only want it if it was aliens? Cause they, Cause they didn't want to do a zombie, really zombie book. book. Yeah. They yeah. said it's been done a hundred times. Like what's the difference between what you're doing and what's already been done? He goes, the oh, difference is. It was, yeah, I it got was, aliens coming. <laughs> yeah, it was never about zombies. It's how do people exactly. react in the situation 100%. where there's zombies. Exactly. Yeah. So, he's, he's anyways, kind of I, I love genius, that story, Kirkman. Man, hundred percent, man. Yeah. He'll see what he's doing with Invincible, um, Firepower. Yep. Like, dude, he's come out with some really awesome, awesome comic books, man. It's incredible, man. That that guy is low key genius. And uh, yeah, I don't know, man. But like Invincible, they, I don't think he thought it was going to last more than like 12 issues. So they were lower print runs at the beginning and then it just yeah. started taking off. What did it go? Like 141 um, issues or some shit like that? One, 144. 144. That's, that's the only set outside of Conan that I have the entire run. So I'm a big Conan fan. So I have the Roy Thomas, Marvel, sure. the entire, almost the entire, I'm missing like a few issues. Um, but I have like the first like 80 which are the most expensive because you got Red Sonia in issue 23, her yeah. first appearance in 24, her first mm -hmm. story. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. It's a weird market. And uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I Good think, time to buy, I would think. Yeah, I, I do think so. I, I, like you said, you got to be smart about it, man, because a, a Deadpool movie, all of a sudden, everyone's right. selling mutants 98 for a bazillion dollars you're like guys it's not worth that much man or you're in a down market. market but it was not a good idea to buy uncanny 130 during the taylor swift type now exactly. that's probably tanked yeah like and look Dazzler, if you watch our man. videos during that time i don't think we ever said you should buy uncanny oh, no, 130 no. right now it was no, no, it was no, a no, lot no. of you know hesitation maybe we should wait nothing has been confirmed there are a yeah. lot of new things coming out that make it seem like she's going to be in it but and then look, she wasn't in it at all. <laughs> now everybody's selling blade books for like crazy prices, man. Because <laughs> well, you know, nice that's a, you know, I don't want to talk. Well, this by the time this comes out, this is probably going to be we're free of spoilers from Wolverine Deadpool, I would think. No. Oh yeah, it's been already been out for over a week, right? Yeah, I think Blade. Yeah, I'm surprised Blade not doing good. I mean, I, I guess you know he just got that cameo, but yeah. uh, it's more about what's gonna what's gonna happen in the future when it comes to like I guess speculation. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And there's been so many issues. I can't remember the name of the other actor who's Mahershala played. Ali. Yeah. He's pissed. They've had, oh, yeah, he's pissed because, I mean, Marvel's been in disarray. I mean, let's just be honest, man. I mean, Deadpool is like a godsend for them because, and yeah. to be honest, right, I'm not sure, like, those are like Fox properties that I know they just picked up. But yep. Fox was doing decent with their movies. And then obviously Sony's killing it with uh, Spider-Man. I don't think they'll ever release that to Marvel specifically over what they've done the last you know stages four and five so I, i'm glad dead daredevil did or uh deadpool did as well as it did i'm hoping captain america will do um well but you know they've gone through all movies go through reshoots but the yeah. reshoots that they've gone through are like very significant reshoots yeah so now they're up to like 350 story. million and uh marketing i think is the same usually you have to double it for marketing yeah. It sucks because they have momentum now. So if they flop yeah. again, it's going to be back to the hemming and hawing, you know? Exactly, yeah. So who who knows what's going to happen with that. But I also think, and I would love your opinion on this, man, because crowdfunding has become so big, and when you look at like at the big two and some of the struggles they've had over the years, I do think a lot of it is talent. Um, 
they, you know, in the tech industry, they call it brain drain when you have a lot of people leave like a certain portion of the tech industry. And that's why they feel like they have to go to other countries to find people. I don't know what you would call it in comic books, but if you look at Scott Snyder and doing his own thing, Jeff Johns and Ghost Machine, he's killing it right now. Yeah. Like you have these guys that have been such a big part of DC and Marvel and they have found like I can make a lot more money, own all of my IP and create yeah. these coming. I mean, Joe Casada just announced that San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con. He's starting amazing comics and he's partnering with Mad Cave. And I can't remember the French company. I wouldn't be able to pronounce it anyways. Mm -hmm. Like that, that I think is affecting the big two. And then you have crowdfunding that, I mean, there's like five or six or seven like big crowdfunding sites and there's thousands of different titles to look for. And a lot of them are written by some pretty like top notch yeah. writers. Right. So I, I think that also is affecting Marvel and DC, I would think. Yeah. I mean, I think they lost a lot of their audience in the movies. I mean, our, yeah. our hobby boomed mainly because of the MCU. I think it was a yeah. big factor in getting a lot of people back in. And I think all the people that they have brought in, they probably lost almost all of them. And then with, um, yeah, the modern comics, they, they've drove, driven away a lot of their fans that have sought in the independent route just to get good art, good stories, yeah. uh, fun comics that they like. I think at the end of the day, talent wins. If you're a talented creator, Jeff Johns is a talented writer, uh, yeah. Gary Frank, Brad Anderson, yeah. all these guys, Jason Fabok are, are fucking dope artists. Yeah. And um, uh, look at YouTube. I say YouTube, comic book YouTube is down across the board. Comics yeah. Explained still kills it because Rob is a talented uh, person that people like. He has a serenading yeah. voice. He yeah. covers topics that are important and he entertains you and informs you at the yeah. same time. So at the end of the day, in these times, the talent, the top tier talent is going to stay afloat. So yeah. that's kind of how I feel about crowdfunding. The thing, the thing I don't like about crowdfunding is that it gets oversaturated. Yeah. And then you have yeah. all these campaigns and it's like, it makes it uh, it makes it oversaturated for the customer, so it's yeah. hard to weed it out. It's like music, right? Music used yeah. to be albums drop, you go pick it up. Now it's like every day there's a new stream song, and it's so much to to weed through to hear quality shit. So, yeah, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. I'm wondering, uh, especially like within the messaging that seems to be like in comics, and you know, some people obviously love it. Some people are just like over it. It's just it's like for yeah. five years straight, you have you know, people wanting to give their message through a character where it doesn't even make sense, man. You're yeah. like, that that's not the character that I used to love. It's like a completely different character. It looks the same. The art's amazing, but the storytelling around it is just like, dude, is, I, I is the art know amazing, who this character <laughs> Well, some of it is. I mean, like Jorge Jimenez, oh, yeah. dude, that He's guy, dope. Dan Mora. Oh my gosh, man. I could uh sean I, murphy i, I mean there's some I, really... I think it goes back to the the the, the talent portion of it yeah. if there's good books they're gonna people are gonna rock with it when donny cates yeah. came on the scene people yeah. were rocking with it i think if you're just making cool interesting stories uh with great artwork that is going to be supported but is that happening probably not as much i think other priorities took place and companies yeah. felt like they needed to fit in with that to kind of like i don't know be in the in the hip cool <laughs> i don't know uh, view of, of, of an audience yeah. but uh, i think yeah the priority guy i think i've heard that before even with the movies the priorities kind of shifted mm -hmm. when deadpool and wolverine is just a fun funny movie with yeah. great action uh that that you don't feel like you're being uh persuaded into any kind of ideal or ideology yeah. you're just there to have fun and just turn yeah. your brain off it's an election year don't nobody want to see that shit we got enough problems <laughs> in real life than to worry yeah. about it in, in entertainment. And I think yeah. a lot of people have made their voice clear with that. We yeah. just want cool shit, man. Just give us cool, fun yeah. uh, stuff to keep us entertained. Yeah, because everywhere you go, it's being shoved down your throat. Like, where's my escape? And if I can't do it in movies, I'm not going to watch the movies anymore. And if I can't go to a comic and escape, I'm not going to read those comics anymore, right? I want to escape because yeah. I'm already being pressured on all these especially like you said during election year and it happens every four years. So it's not like this year's different than the last four years. Yeah, every year is the most important year. election of your life. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Ever exactly. since I can remember a hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's, that's, that's so true, bro. So true, man. All right. Yeah. So where, where are all these omnibuses right now, man? You still have your setup. Are you still in your house now? Yeah. Or did you guys already move out? No, no, no. We're still in the house. So okay, this room yeah. was like a theater when we bought it. Oh, and it okay. looks dope, but I had all these arcade one-ups. I actually sold like nine of my arcade one-ups. So I had this room filled with arcades, and yeah. that's why we got the carpet in here. 
But like right outside my door is that blue floor gotcha. area with the with the shelving. Got the omnibus area. I had to sell most of the statues, but I still kept ones that I was like, these are coming to the new setup, man. Fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I still have a couple of bangers. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm ready to you know w- once we re you know downsize, move into a new house. I I have statues coming and stuff, so it's yeah. not like it's gonna be over with. Um, yeah. we just caught we caught a snag, man. We bit off more than we could chew. We thought we would chew like hell, but we ended yeah. up choking on it. So now we're like, yeah, fuck, yeah, yeah. take a step back. But uh, I think we'll be back on track. Yo, and I think this new kind of um, wave will help us coast out longer than I had had we not done this. So I think we'll be yeah. able to ride it out as long as we need to. And uh, knock on wood, until the house sells, even if I started doing way better financially, we still need to sell the house. Yeah. M- one of my golden rules, if you go back to my video uh, what do you do for a living? One of my golden mm-hmm. rules was keep the overhead low, but yeah, I didn't yeah. keep the overhead low. I kind of moved man. up in my financial situation and decided to up my overhead like an idiot, thinking it was going to help the channel, but it didn't. Uh, so big, huge lesson learned. At least I got it out of my system and we tried it. We came, we saw, we didn't conquer, but we did it. Yeah. And uh, just looking forward to to moving on, man. But yeah, for the time being, I actually am enjoying the space a lot more than I have been for the last eight <laughs> months or so, because now I'm like, feeling it again you know yeah yeah well i mean it's a, such a badass setup it's one of the best setups i think on youtube man so oh, man. even I, though I it did a better work, ones, but i do appreciate that <laughs> no nah, dude the the like you said the ladder the setup <laughs> with the lights and then obviously the statues on the other side i think you have the two yellow chairs or whatever i can't remember yeah well they're like yellow. they're like a white pleather they're cheap old chairs oh, yeah, but yeah. yeah but still it looks dope man it's like like you said it, if you're thinking about like what's the best setup for an in-person interview, right? You have the background of the omnibuses. You got that. It's just it was dope, man. It's it is dope. You know, so. and, and that's something that maybe we'll bring back. You know, if we're gonna be yeah. here for a little bit longer, I still have that setup out there. Maybe we yeah. get somebody that does come over and we continue the live morning shows. But we also I can still do podcast episode four. You know, the episodes two and yeah. three didn't really do well. However, I was experimenting with like breaking them up in clips and doing yeah. shorts. And I think I uh, took away from the full hour, two hour long discussion. When I did it with Drew, it, it performed pretty well. I thought there yeah. might have been a, you know, kind of a, a need for that type of a video content as well. Just two dudes talking about comics, but you yeah. feel like you're in a podcasty type of set. Yeah. Uh, so I, I am considering, you know, kind of trying to do that again. Uh, yeah, I might, I might, now that I'm talking about it, I'm, my head's already like, oh, maybe I should call this guy. Maybe I should call that yeah. guy. And see, uh, you know, let's, let's just film it. I mean, it's just more content at the end of the day. A hundred percent. Now people jumping into like YouTube, it's probably like the worst time maybe right now, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because of everything that's going on in the world right now, I feel like everything's falling apart. Yeah. Uh, so it's probably the worst time to try and start a channel. But like when you started, was there a secret, like, what helped you grow the fastest um, and helped you become the gem mint that most fans know? And, you know, I've seen you at uh, San Diego Comic-Con. I think you were there last year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I got yeah. there with Todd McFarlane last year. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, I mean, a lot of people know you, bro. I mean, you, you've had a channel. You've been on. I mean, there's, like, yeah. people taking pictures with you, man. So I saw you walk by, and I was going to say hi. Oh, but I didn't notice. You already had a bunch of people all around <laughs> you. So I'm like, dude, Jim, I mean, you, you've built, like, a channel – that has a following. So you've done amazing. What's that secret around that? Man, what do you I think, think the secret you know, sauce was? Ultimately, they watch for you. Yeah, you, know, uh, you have a cool statue. You have a cool book. That might lure some people in, but they'll stay. Okay, here's my thing. What yeah. I really learned, you don't need to tell anybody to subscribe to your channel. P- if people like you, they're going to subscribe to you. If they like the video, they're going to like it. You don't have to tell them to do that. If they yeah. find the content interesting enough, they're going to comment. So we don't need to tell people to do that anymore. People know how YouTube works. So that's kind of my thing. You know, the, they'll subscribe for you. Um, I, I happen to put out daily content because that's what I wanted as a fan. Little did I know, and I, and I was speaking with bigger channels after this, like, you're already doing a lot of things right. Daily content is key. You know, so that was something that I, I kind of fell off on that. Like, right now, I didn't have a video come out today. But I figure I'm doing lives Monday through Friday. And I don't even know if that's still the way the algorithm works. They changed that yeah. shit, bro. Like, I, I don't All know. All the anymore. time, man. But yeah. uh, I, I got lucky in the sense that I did something that um, I wanted as a fan. And it, it worked with the algorithm. And um, sharing your passion. 
I was fortunate enough to have built up a collection before I started my channel. So I already had a lot of stuff to like grab from. You know, yeah. and, and then at the end of the day, it was stuff that I le legitimately liked. Like, here's every Spider-Man omnibus. This is my favorite character. These collects that. <laughs> and I also got really lucky, man. The omnibus hobby was super new at the time. Yeah. Um, statues had been around, but I think they saw a big growth right around the time that I started doing videos and then to the pandemic. So a lot of stars aligned, man. You know, I don't know that I could tell somebody, you know, what to do if they started a channel now. Yeah. Uh, I would probably recommend learn shorts. Learn how to create yeah. short form content, which now I feel like a dinosaur. I don't know how to do it. You know, I can't. My <laughs> mind doesn't work like that. Right, but right. But I feel yeah, like yeah. TikTok and YouTube shorts and Instagram reels, if you want to grow your channel, yeah. I would lean into that, man. Well, you know, I was reading an article, man, because uh, YouTube has done so good on shorts. Now TikTok is asking for longer form, like four <laughs> to five minute, right? Jeez. Because they want to be able to commit, uh, compete on those longer videos that have really good content where they could capture people a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> YouTube's trying to do what TikTok has been doing. So like, it's like, uh, it's inc impossible to understand the algorithm sometimes, I think. And by yeah. the time you think you figured it out, they've you already switched it. it up, right? 100%. So, yeah. So at the end I, of the day, all you could do- all you can do is make videos that you like, that you legitimately there are you passionate about, be honest and authentic, and it, yeah. you'll resonate with people. That's the best thing you can do is just be yourself. And I've, yeah, yeah. I gained a following like that, and I lost a following like that by not yeah. just being myself. And even yeah. though I was still me, I was kind of being this version that I thought I needed to be when that's not what anybody signed up for. Nobody signed up for professional gem mint. They signed yeah, up for yeah. the guy that got drunk on streams and drove to Taco Bell while still streaming and uh, <laughs> would curse and would whatever. Like, that's what they signed up for. And I don't know yeah. who or why I thought I needed to be something else. But just be yourself, you know, and uh, share what you love. And there's going to be a lot of other people that love it as well. And then they'll hopefully they'll like you if you just, uh, you know, if you're a likable person, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you're likable. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. some people, I don't know. I mean, it might not be for everyone, you know, so I don't know. 100%. Yeah. And I th also think the pandemic helped a lot of channels too, how, right? Man, you're just how lucky around. did I get? I was already yeah, building up amazing. traction and then boom, everybody's home with stimulus checks. Like I got <laughs> so many stars aligned, which again, I'm not a religious person, spiritual. And I'm like, damn, this shit just fell into place too fucking weird, bro. Like yeah, so yeah. many stars aligned to to help me out in this thing, man. And um, yeah, man, I think about it. Yeah. The pandemic, everybody was watching YouTube during that time. Yeah, yeah. That's and awesome, the movies man. were popping during that time. That's Infinity War. That's 100%. Endgame. Like, yeah. you know, how many things happened to make that work, you know? Well, it kind of shows that when uh, when Marvel starts putting out content that's not that great, it hurts the entire industry, right? It hurts because the statue hobby. It hurts the omnibus everything. hobby. It hurts YouTube views. 100%. It yeah. hurts single issues. Because you're bringing people in, and, and then mm -hmm. there's a small percentage of those billions of people or whatever it is that are like, oh, damn, let me check out comics. Oh, what, this yeah. sucks. This isn't like yeah. the movie. Fuck this shit. Yeah. Like, that's what happens, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Jim, man, I want to be super respectful for your time, bro. I really appreciate you coming on, man. Been a fan of the channel for a long time. Enjoying the morning show with your your wonderful wife, man. I think it's pretty awesome that you guys are coming together and just, just talking about the things that you love, man. And uh, I wish you nothing but the best. We've all been through what you're going. At least a lot of us have been through what you're going through, man. Um, and, uh, yeah, hang in there, bro. Hang in Will there. Do. I've been there, bro. I've been bro, there, man. I'm I still so fall more, into it sometimes, uh, man. <laughs> I'm in, so, yeah, I'm, I'm in such a better space than I was a week ago. I'm really I'm glad that I, uh, kind of got everything off my chest and I feel really good about the future. I eat, you know, eat what, no matter what happens, I just I feel way better about it. And I, and I, and I really enjoyed connecting with everybody again this last week. So I can't, I can't wait for Monday to be yeah, honest. Yeah. Yo, somebody sent us a theme song. This shit blew it, you know, it brought me to tears. Yo, know, I ain't no gonna lie. Way. I, I hope it doesn't on the stream when I play it because out of nowhere, this dude just sent me a theme song that he wrote. I guess he made it with AI, but it uh -huh. sounds like the Gem Mint anime theme song. I'm like, no way. <laughs> That's <laughs> dope as hell, man. Yo, it's so dope. It's like, it sounds like if Paramore made an anime theme song and it's Gem <laughs> Mint centric. I'm like, yo, this shit was fucking crazy. Like, it's hype. It's crazy. <laughs> Your new opening now is going to be that song? Monday morning, man. I can't Monday wait morning. to let y'all hear it. <laughs> I'll be on. I'll be on, man. I'll be checking it out, man. It's like, you ever that's watch awesome. Dragon Ball Z? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you got the intro music, and they're like flying in the air. Like, that's what it feels like, man. <laughs> it's kind that of funny. So cool, man. Because it's kind of ironic because you think me, I'm a hip-hop guy, or I like, you know, yeah, yeah. rock. But it's like this happy, 
uh, anime vibe, but it fucking slaps at the same time. It's like hype. So I'm like, yo, this is perfect, man. Yeah. And, and the fact that somebody that just made this and just sent it to me, like, here, bro, love you. Like, yeah. what the fuck, man? I think Crazy. that's awesome, man. Yeah, I so mean, cool, that, man. that shows that uh, there's still you still have an audience that really cares for you, man. Bro, I'm, I'm glad back, that man. you're... I'm glad that you're feeling kind of out of that rut, bro, because that's yeah. a, it's an ugly place to be in. It's a dangerous place to be in. We've all fallen into it. And uh, sometimes you need someone to put their hand down and pick you up, bro. And yeah. I'm glad that you have the audience that you do to, to help with that, man. Yeah, so, man. Me too. It's, it's really awesome for sure. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Jim. Thank you. Happy for you, brother. I'm glad that you're in a better place, man. Thank you for spending some time with me today, man. Like I said, been a fan for a long time. It's just cool just to sit down and chat. Hopefully, we could do this again sometime. Yeah, same. Anytime, man. Hit me up. I uh, wish you the best with your channel as well, man. Don't tell them to like or subscribe or comment. They'll do it if they <laughs> feel compelled to. They know what to do. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right on, Jim. Thanks, brother. Appreciate you, man. Have a, a great weekend, bro. You too, man. See you guys. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.